here and welcome to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, I invite you to come back anytime because I like to uh, create videos that have to do with making our homes a special place to share with our friends and family and a happy, loving place. So uh, come on back. But today's topic is actually my problem with fungus gnats. Now, before Christmas, I did notice that I was having the beginnings of an infestation on some of the uh, houseplants that I keep in my bathroom. And I sort of ignored it because, you know, I was very busy with Christmas and all of the festivities. So I just didn't um, get around to taking care of it. But for our New Year's resolution, I decided that I was going to tackle this problem and really get these fungus gnats completely eradicated from my home. So to get started, I wanted to explain to you about fungus gnats and their life cycle. So the first thing is, um, I'm gonna show here a picture of the larvae. This little critter here, uh, not too attractive, but they live in the soil of your house plants. When you overwater and the soil stays moist all the time, that is the optimal um, conditions for larvae to live in and to grow and uh, you know become grow into adults. So um, I think that's what had happened with a couple of my plants that maybe weren't getting as much sun in the winter time as I thought they were, and so they were a bit overwatered. And then that provided the conditions for fungus gnats to uh, multiply. So first we have the larvae, and then, uh, well, adult, fungus gnats. So if you just get a couple fungus gnats in your home and they lay eggs and fungus gnats can lay between two and 300 eggs, each adult female. So in the life cycle, the adult female lays eggs, you know, they hatch and become larvae and they go into a stage called the pupa stage and then emerge as adults. When, and that's when you see them when they're flying around your home. Um, and here's a picture of an adult. I'm sure if you've encountered these little guys, you've seen them before buzzing around you and they like to buzz in your face and things like that, which is so annoying. The adults really aren't harmful to anything, but the larvae can be damaging to your uh, houseplants because they can burrow down and eat on the roots of your houseplants, especially if you have a large infestation. So with the life cycle, what happens is when you have uh, you know, eggs laid by an adult and then they hatch, become larvae and uh, emerge as adults, the adults live for about eight days. And if they're flying around your home, and they land on another plant in another room in, in your house, they can lay eggs on that plant and start that whole cycle on that plant. More adults emerge and then, you know, they can go to another area of your home and infect another plant. So this is a problem because even if you have uh, uh, sticky traps like I have used these Q traps before uh, in catching the adults in my home. And the Q traps look like this. Um, they're in plastic because they are extremely sticky, goopy uh, kind of glue, I guess, is on both sides of each sticky trap. And what you do is you take them out from this plastic and pull out one sticky trap at a time. And then you can use this little pointed edge to uh, push it into the soil of a houseplant that you've noticed adults flying around. And of course they stick to this and they die. Well, um, what happens 
even if you have sticky traps out, which was one of the first things I did, some of the adults do escape and get to another area of your home and do another infestation in another plant. So they are very tenacious, these fungus gnats. And so what I did uh, with this life cycle of adults laying eggs, become larvae, uh, emerge as new adults, and even though the adults only live for eight days, if they can make it to the females, if they can make it to another plant in your home and lay eggs, you're going to have an infestation in the new plant uh, that had been untouched before. So I decided with my plants that were in my guest bedroom, my bathroom, my bedroom, in my living room and dining room area, uh, and I had, you know, think, uh, fungus gnats buzzing around, really, all around my house. I went upstairs and I closed every single door to my bedrooms and my office and so on. So no adults could escape and get to a different area of my home. Um, and because fungus gnat larvae like moist soil, I cut back on the watering of my plants. So um, I was trying to keep the adults in this life cycle process um, from going to uh, other areas of my house to infect anything. So I had read on uh, Google that one of the treatments that you can use that is very safe is to use hydrogen peroxide. So a 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide can be uh, stirred into a bucket of water in a four to one ratio, one cup of hydrogen peroxide to four cups of water. And you mix up that, and then you can use that to water your plants with. So the hydrogen peroxide method was not completely effective in eradicating all of the fungus gnats from my home. Um, so, and, and I wanted to caution you because one of the uh, sources that I checked said or recommended using a spray of that same hydrogen peroxide uh, solution to spray your plants with it as well. And I wanna caution you about that because, uh, well, I'd like to show you right here a photograph of my baby uh, rubber plant, which was a gorgeous plant. And I did spray it because I was trying to treat all of my plants in my home, even though it wasn't infected. I did spray it with this hydrogen peroxide water solution. And as you can see from the picture, it really damaged the foliage. So I do not recommend using a spray solution on any of your foliage. Do not do that. Um, now, um, so because remember, we're talking about a life cycle of fungus gnats and the adults laying more eggs. And it, this is a problem that you cannot solve with simply one treatment of any form. So we used this chemical solution first. My second attempt was, uh, this is called systemic houseplant insect control. And I got this at my local garden center. They recommended it to me. And it has granules and you sprinkle them on the soil and then water it in. And this is supposed to kill the larvae. Well, unfortunately, I mean, this did help I saw a drop in the numbers of house uh, of fungus gnats on my house plants, but it didn't get rid of them completely. So I used this treatment, and I'm not a big fan of using chemical solutions too much because you know I I try to do things as much organically as I can. But I was getting desperate, so I did give this a try, and again it did lower the numbers just like the hydrogen peroxide did. Then I read about this product called Mosquito Bits, and I actually ordered this on Amazon to give it a try. And the directions for applying Mosquito Bits to houseplants, one of the ways you can do it is by uh, soaking the Mosquito Bits in water and then using that water to um, 
water all your house plants with. Now, these mosquito bits contain an, uh, an organism, and let me see if I can say it correctly. It is Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis. And for short, it's called BTI. The variety is the israelensis. This particular uh, bacterium attacks and kills the larvae of mosquitoes, but because fungus gnats are in the same family with mosquitoes, it kills their larvae as well. Um, and so this has been my latest attempt to eradicate all larvae all and, and have all the adults die off. No more larvae because no more eggs are being laid and trying to just break that cycle. And um, so I've done one treatment of this. I'm going to do a second treatment in a couple of weeks, or, or sorry, the next time I water, which I am waiting um, not quite two weeks between waterings to allow the soil to dry out completely. But I'm going to continue applying this until I do not see one single fungus gnat in my home. And I'm going to do it as a prevention to make sure that no more uh, just, you know, isolated little fungus gnat gets, you know, survives somewhere in my home and lays some more eggs and starts that whole life cycle over again. <clears throat> so that's my technique. And I'm going to show you a little bit of video on how I treated my plants, especially with the uh, mosquito bits, and how effective these Q-traps are for catching the adults. These are great and I do recommend these if you've got an infestation like I have. So there you are, that's uh, my process. And again, we wanna break that cycle and also in the future prevent any uh, infestations again. So to talk just quickly about prevention, some of the tips that I have read about and I find that they do work uh, over this, uh, I've been treating my plants for about almost two months now. Uh, anyway, um, for prevention, you want to be sure not to overwater your plants, particularly in the winter time. You want to let the soil dry out in between waterings and uh, the larvae cannot live in dry soil. So if you do that, that's going to help a lot. And then also when you bring a new house plant into your home from you know a garden center or from the grocery store, maybe you saw something cute and want to pick it up and bring it home, just do an inspection of that plant before you uh, bring it in the house so that you can be sure there are no uh, adults flying around or in the foliage. And then also you can check the soil for larvae. Now the larvae are tiny. They're only, I think about a fourth of an inch long. So that's pretty small, but get in there and you can try looking and see if you can uh, see any evidence of larvae. So prevention is good. And uh, I encourage you to not live with those fungus gnats anymore, but to fight the battle and get them out of your house and away from your house plants. Here you can see I have a bucket and I have placed two gallons of water in this bucket. And then additionally, I put in four tablespoons of my mosquito bits. And the mosquito bits are, um, or have been soaking in this bucket for two days indoors. I wanted them to be sort of at room temperature and therefore I'm able to get an even distribution of the Bacillus thuringiensis, <laughs> or BT for short, from the mosquito bits into this uh, mixture of water. Yeah. And according to instructions, I went around uh, yesterday afternoon and I took an old spoon and I uh, sort of aerated the soil with that spoon. I kind of dug up without disturbing the roots too much, but I loosened the soil all around in order to um, make it possible for this 
mosquito bits treatment to really soak in thoroughly down into the roots, directly by the roots where the larvae like to live, and also um, just be able to be absorbed evenly all around in the soil of the plant. So it gets to any larvae that happen to be living in that soil. So here I am with the culprit, the plant that started the infestation, this Rex begonia. And I wanted to show you that I've had it quarantined in one of my guest bedrooms for, well, since right after Christmas, I moved it and um, tried to keep, because it just was buzzing with fungus gnats. And I've tried all three treatments on it. I've used the uh, hydrogen peroxide water mixture, and I tried this systemic chemical treatment and then lastly, I have been using the mosquito bits on it. And now I am pretty certain that it's just about done. But to be absolutely positive that all the larvae are gone and no more adults are going to be uh, hatching and flying around my house and spreading uh, eggs in other plants anymore, I'm going to continue, I'm gonna do two more treatments with the mosquito bits water. And I'm going to wait about 10 days to two weeks to be sure that all the soils have dried out completely. And I'm going to water it with the mosquito bits water to continue to ensure that there are no larvae alive in any of my soils of any of my house plants. So I want to show you, if I can, on this Q-trap here, there are two, I don't know if you can see them in the video, but there are just two adults stuck on the Q-trap. And that is after a week uh, has gone by. So the adults seem to be gone and we're gonna make sure that no more hatch by continued treatments with the um, mosquito bits. And I'm going to keep this plant quarantined until probably another month, I think. I'll keep it away from my other plants and also treat all of my plants so that there's no infestation anywhere in my home. Anyway, I hope you find that this video has been helpful to you if you have found yourself in the same predicament I've been in with these darn fungus gnats. And um, just take some of these tips and try them and I think you will find that you can get your house fungus gnat free and win the battle against these pests. Good luck.